Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're looking at the continuing geomagnetic storm, now into its fourth day. We'll also see another look at pre-seismic signals, an opportunity for scientists to start copying the interdisciplinary tactics I use, and a change in the Chandler wobble. But we are starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, where we find a satellite calibration roll, and then small pops continuing. We've seen the M-class solar flares keep firing, but they're not really releasing many CMEs, and none at all towards the Earth. The sunspots have not grown a ton in the last day, but the big central group has complexity and is directly facing Earth right now. Eyes open there for more flares, but the bigger story right now is with the solar wind and geomagnetic storm. The solar wind has been unrelenting. Plasma speed continues rising and density has not fallen off as usually happens during the latter portions of coronal hole stream events. Even with persistent dynamic pressure, what's happening geomagnetically is too much. We got back into level 3 storm conditions this morning and there's just no rational explanation for it other than that our planetary magnetic shield is weak, taking a pounding and once again allowing outside solar storm conditions to prevail. You're literally seeing a key sign of the magnetic pole shift, and the world is largely oblivious to it. Up next, folks, another excellent paper on pre-seismic signals. This one looked at total electron content and GPS data based on Earth's magnetic field, and found both with sharp changes in the last two hours prior to the quake. Combining the days to weeks before signals with these shorter warning signals is how they will eventually predict them in real life. Up next, I love this, but I'm not sure climatologists will. There's an enormous effort to get atmospheric, ionospheric, and magnetospheric scientists to talk to one another, see where things cross over. Now, this is always a great idea in science, but here, we might see that parlay into solar climate forcing or the impact of the ongoing magnetic pole shift on climate change. Hey, I can hope, right? Lastly today, great observation and a horribly bad attempt at explaining it. Since 2015, the Chandler wobble has been diminishing. This is a critical component of the polar motion and variability, and they blame the 2021 and 2022 human-driven changes in global water storage. The problem is, these exact changes in the wobble in Earth's magnetic field are expected during the magnetic pole shift, and while they would love to blame human construction and water movement, there was no greater water movement in that period than the 2011 summer U.S. Mississippi floods. Remember they were opening all those levees and the gates? We remember. Folks, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be breaking down the best upcoming presentations at AGU 25. They really went hard on the magnetic field in the sun this year, and we can't wait to share those with you this month. Folks, the big prepper events begin tomorrow at Observer Ranch, Global Expert Level this weekend, Colorado Prepper Expo next weekend, and we continue the major events into November. But I also want to mention the book signings and shippings are chugging along. We're going as fast as we can, I promise. And also, Keep an eye open in the coming days for the winter tour tickets to become available. The five cities are set, and these tickets will be available in just a few days. Start planning that trip now. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.